it's inevitable, right? If you want to be a successful software engineer in your career, eventually you're going to become an engineering manager. Or is that true? Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I wanted to walk through what it means to be an engineering manager and why that might not be a great fit for everyone. Now, this is a topic that I discussed on my other YouTube channel called Code Commute. So if you're interested in that, you can check out that channel. It's in a vlog format. So similar topics to what you'll see on this channel, but much more of a stream of consciousness. To kick things off, I get it. I understand why there's a big misconception that a lot of the times people see moving into engineering management as the natural progression for a software engineer. And I think that's because historically we've seen a lot of this happening, right? There's an engineer who's doing really well, they get promoted into senior, and then at some point there's not really another sort of role or title. So they go, okay, well, I guess we're going to put you in charge of this team because you've been doing a good job. But the reality is that engineering management and being an individual contributor software engineer are completely different roles. So I'm going to start by talking about some differences here so that we can understand what's involved with the role and see just why these things truly are different. As software engineers, we're expected that as we become more and more senior, our impact will grow and grow. And I mean, that is the same for an engineering manager, but how we're having impact looks different. As a software engineer, it's going to be about the technical contributions we have, right? So the code that we're creating, the architecture that we're creating, and then when we're collaborating with other teams, being able to deliver on these things by implementing software. Your technical expertise will continue to grow. Yes, as you become more and more senior, it's going to be more and more important to have better soft skills so that you can collaborate better with others. But ultimately, it's going to be about your technical contributions and how you can align those with business needs. But engineering management is very different. As an engineering manager, it's not common that we are writing code. Now, there will always be exceptions to this, right? So I'll talk about some of my own experience in just a moment where I was writing code at the same time as being an engineering manager. But as engineering managers grow more and more in their career, they spend less and less time writing code. Their individual contribution continues to drop because their time is better spent making sure that their team and others can be more productive. In my opinion, this is much more of a support support role. People will debate the balance here, but I like to think that engineering management is significantly more about people, and the other side of this is going to be about aligning what people are doing to business impact. But as an engineering manager, I like to focus most of my attention and effort into growing individuals on the team. I want to make sure that they're growing in their career, and I want to make sure that they're able to do their best work possible. If I can align both of those things with the direction the business is heading, then I think we have a great recipe. But that means for me to be successful, it's not about the code that I'm writing. And this is going to be very different than a software engineer. So is it really a problem that software engineers transition into an engineering manager role? And the answer to that is no, it's certainly not a problem. But I do think that they are different roles. And I wanted to walk you through my experience in that transition, how it took me roughly seven, eight years to figure out what it meant for me. And then from there, we can talk about some reflection that you can be doing to see if this is a good fit for yourself. So at this point in time when the video is being recorded, I've been an engineering manager for just over 12 years. The first eight years that I was an engineering manager, I was writing code at the same time that I was managing teams. And that meant that a lot of my time and effort was split between writing code, you know, contributing to the code base and managing those teams as well. But over time, that started to shift more and more towards people. But early on, I had no idea what I was doing. Truthfully, I was sort of put into this role. It's a bit of a unique experience being at a startup and kind of doing what just needs to get done and ensuring that I could help try to lead some of the teams early on as we were scaling up. But like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. In the beginning, I was spending almost all of my time writing code. And then I would realize, oh, I haven't really done much team leadership management, so I should shift gears. And then I would pivot completely and go the exact opposite direction, over-indexing and trying to make sure that I was managing people and doing leadership. And then I would flip-flop the other way. And this was really difficult for me to balance early on, because like I said, I didn't really know what I was doing. The way that I made both of these things work together was just by working a lot more. And that's because... I understood that both sides were important, but I did not know how to balance. And because my role was truly split between two, as a technical manager, it meant that I was responsible still for individual contribution and leading people. Yes, I did say earlier that engineering managers will not be responsible for writing code as they continue to advance in their career, and that's because if they continue to focus on an engineering manager track, there is just truly less time for writing code. Your impact is better realized by leading the team and not just hands-on contribution. 
Now, in my own career, I had an excellent HR leader, and periodically she would have a conversation with me and she would say, hey, Nick, what are your thoughts? Do you think that you're going to lean more towards people leadership, or do you want to keep your hands in the code? Are you thinking more about an architecture type of role? And we would have this conversation regularly over the years, and I never really knew the answer. I knew that if I took my hands out of the code, I wouldn't be happy, but I also knew that I was really enjoying the people leadership side of things. So I continued to sort of ride that line and do both roles at the same time. But this started to change just prior to when I moved over to Microsoft. And what I started to realize for myself is that my time was getting stretched more and more across different things, and I was having more opportunities to influence other individuals, leading teams, and having impact in other ways that meant my hands were not in the code anymore. Truthfully, I think that it took realizing, being in this situation, that I could have a big impact by not just writing code anymore. Up until that point, I had continued to keep putting my hands into the code, getting that positive feedback about what I'm writing is having, you know, a positive impact on the features that we're delivering, and I just kept doing that. But once I started removing my hands from the code and I could have a bigger impact outside of that, then I really started to realize, oh, I can have a larger impact if I'm spending less time just writing code. Now, that might not be the case for everyone, right? You might not even enjoy the management side of things. You might not enjoy working with people at the same level that we have to do as engineering managers. And that's totally okay. What I'm trying to say here is that it took me roughly eight years to really figure that out for myself. And that's going to bring me to the next thing that I want to talk about, which is sort of this transition phase. So if you are considering that you are moving into an engineering manager position from an individual contributor role, or if you've sort of found yourself in this situation, say you're kind of like me and you're working at a startup or a small team and you're sort of just plopped into this engineering leadership role, what is that going to look like for you? The thing that I've noticed, not only from my own experience, but from talking with other engineering managers that have gone from IC into management is that it's a bit of a struggle. And it's a struggle because we are so used to having our hands in the code and we're so focused on individual contribution being the thing that measures our success. What ends up happening is that we realize we have to spend time with our team, we have to build trust, we have to build respect, we have to start peopling a lot more. It's a lot more than we anticipate. But the problem with that is that we start to feel like if I'm doing all this stuff with people that I'm not used to doing, look what's happening to my individual contribution. I have less time to write code. Does that mean I have to work longer? You start to get stressed about the fact that you're not writing as much code or that it's a lot more challenging to keep up to date with all the code changes. And it's really stressful and it's hard to balance these things because the expectations that we have for ourselves need to start shifting. Now, one piece of advice that I try to give everyone when it comes to role changes and things like that is make sure you're having conversations with your manager. Because if you're watching this and you're saying, well, Nick says that we're not going to be writing code as engineering managers, you might be working at an organization where they legitimately expect you to be writing code still as an engineering manager. Have that conversation with your manager to figure out what the expectations are. More often than not, again, from my own experience and talking with others, is that the expectation of writing code continues to drop. And that means that the expectation of you working with people, leading people, helping them grow in their career, helping to do probably what I consider a little bit more product and project management than you're maybe used to, all of those other things take more time and you need to be spending more time doing them. Now, I don't have hard stats on this, but I think roughly around five or six employees that are reporting to you, once you start hitting roughly that number, you should find that you have almost no time at all to be writing code in a significant way. Maybe you could argue that if you're working longer hours, or maybe you're trying to rush through some other things, you could be writing code. But then the question is truly, is that the best way for you to be spending your time? Personally, I think the answer is no, we should be spending less time with our hands in the code, but that means that we're now in a situation where we can be working on delegating things. We can be making sure that we have teams that are structured from more junior to more senior members. We can be making sure that those individuals are working on delegation. We can try to ensure that our whole team is being productive. There are tons of other skills and things that we need to work on as engineering managers that are not just writing code. Now, that doesn't mean that being technical isn't helpful. In fact, I would say one of the things that's helped me tremendously in my engineering management career is the fact that I have remained technical. I love to code still. I've been an engineering manager for four and a half years at Microsoft. I don't code at all at work, but I love to code every single day outside of work. I write tons of C-sharp code. You've probably noticed that from my YouTube channel or the other content that I put out. 
but I love C-sharp. I love building things. It's just not what I do at work. But for me, that's something that I found very helpful. And that's because in terms of being able to communicate effectively with the engineers, it allows me to still remain very relatable with the engineers. They understand that I understand how to write code, that I understand how to navigate code bases. I might not understand the exact thing they're working on in the exact bit of code or the class that they're working on, but that's totally cool. At least I can make sure that we're getting on the same page when having technical conversations, and that's not a waste of time for us. But again, I think one of the biggest challenges when individual contributors are transitioning into a management role is how to balance their time and making sure that they can start to feel like they are having a positive impact without having to write code. But that's going to bring me to the very last point that I want to talk about here, which is self-awareness and reflection. Now, to start this part of the conversation off, I wanted to continue from where we were just at. And that's if you're becoming an engineering manager and you're thinking through, hey, look, I used to measure my success as an individual contributor by my ability to deliver on code, the business contributions. And now that I'm an engineering manager, that looks very different. We need to make sure that we're finding the right alignment with our own engineering manager, that we're able to start measuring our success in terms of what our team is able to do, and no longer just about our own contributions. This looks very different. And that means that when you're reflecting on your own productivity, your own ability to be delivering on business initiatives, business value, that that is just going to look different. So how you reflect on this type of stuff is going to evolve, right? It's no longer reflection and saying, hmm, like how much code did I commit? Like what parts of the product did I go build specifically? That's just not going to be happening anymore. Or if it is, it's going to be reduced greatly. So what does it look like to be successful in your role? Well, that could mean that you were helping lead your team and you have engineers that are responsible for different initiatives. You were keeping them unblocked. You were helping them navigate architectural decisions. You were helping make sure that other teams were brought in as necessary, right? There's a lot of different other factors that can come together here, but this is going to take some time, some effort, and a lot of reflection to make sure that you understand the impact that you are having. Now, the other part about self-awareness and reflection that I wanted to talk about is whether or not this is even a good fit for you. And I mean this genuinely, right? I'm not trying to gatekeep engineering management. There are many companies that have IC career progression that goes all the way following the same sort of levels as engineering managers. They just don't have a people management component. And that means that you shouldn't have to deviate from your individual contribution to become an engineering manager just in order to grow in your career. For some people, it's truly just not a good fit for their interests or their skill sets. And for other people, it might be a very natural progression. I think some things that are important to be asking yourself are about what you are motivated by. And again, for me, this took many years to realize that I actually do get enjoyment and fulfillment from helping people. And I do get enjoyment and fulfillment from seeing larger scope projects come together and be delivered successfully. Earlier on, it felt like for me that I needed to be the ones having my hands in the code to feel like almost like that I was the single person responsible for things. And that shifted over time. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. This is things that are going to be motivating for you. And that can look very different from person to person. If you truly do enjoy the technical challenges, having your head in the code, you like being able to navigate code bases, work on technical challenges, architecture, debugging things, all of those things, if they're of interest to you and you would love to keep focusing on them, no sweat. There's nothing wrong with that. You may find that if you enjoy those things and move into engineering management, you have less time for the stuff that you enjoy. Now, of course, in engineering management, there are things that I don't love doing. I don't love having difficult conversations with people. That's really challenging. I don't know many people that love having difficult conversations, but not every single part of the role is going to be things that we love. And that's okay, because I think the other parts of engineering management, when I reflect on what I'm interested in and what makes me feel fulfilled, most of the other parts of the engineering manager role really make me feel good about my career and what I'm doing every day. And that means that other things like having difficult conversations, when they come up, I understand that they're important. They have to happen. Might not be something I love, but it's part of the role. I think that as you're moving forward in your career, especially if you're more junior in your career and trying to figure out like, hey, what's this going to look like in five, 10 years from now? Should I be thinking about management? Should I be trying to line that career path up for myself? Because I have questions like this coming to me all the time about what people should be doing. And I think the most important part is just periodically having this reflection conversation with yourself to see what really motivates you. This type of thing will change over time. 
Like I said, I found myself in a dual role for eight years and didn't really know until the end of that eight year period what I really felt would motivate me most. I hope you found this helpful. And again, just a reminder, if you like conversations like this and you would like to see more of a stream of consciousness approach, you can check out Code Commute on YouTube. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.